Before it got addicted to Versus films, Toho produced four solo kaiju adventures from 1954 to 1961. Three of those kaiju would become international superstars, but this video is about the one who got left behind. Greetings kaiju fans, I'm the king of the monsters, and today we're taking an updated look at the unbelievable Varen. <laughs> Varen debuted in a self-titled 1958 film. A Mesozoic reptile known as a Varen apode, he emerged from Kitakami River and destroyed the nearby village before landing at Haneda Airport, where the JSDF killed him by tricking him into swallowing several powerful bombs. The movie was originally commissioned by an American studio as a TV movie, then was hastily transformed into a Japanese theatrical release after the studio went under. With a lower budget and generic script, it proved much less successful than its contemporaries at home and abroad. A 10 meter, 60 metric ton youngster crossed over to the Godzilla series in Destroy All Monsters as one of the kaiju interned on Monsterland. Despite his abbreviated film career, Varen's memorable design has given him a sort of cult status among kaiju fans, and he was considered for at least three other roles that never came to be. Special effects director Eiji Tsuburaya initially conceived of Varen as a godzilla Kappa hybrid, with Akira Watanabe working in the monster's ability to glide. Teizo Toshimitsu modeled Varen's head, the Yagi brothers Kanju and Yasue handled his body, and newcomer Keizo Murase created his skin, back, and claws. Murase constructed the scales on the monster's back out of peanut shells, while its spines were created from translucent tubing which was cut to size and wrapped in sheets of vinyl. The suit's eyes were similarly translucent, allowing built-in lights to shine through. Color photos of the suit show that it was brown, while some publicity stills painted the beast green. Haruo Nakajima wore Varen's suit for most of his scenes, with Katsumi Tezuka stepping in for water scenes. Nakajima suffered his only major injury as a suit actor during filming. The truck that exploded underneath Varen badly burned his stomach. A flying prop and hand-operated puppet, or gignol, both roughly one-half size, were employed to portray the monster in addition to the suit. The filmmakers recycled a few shots from Godzilla, specifically of the monster's feet and tail, plus a couple of erroneous frames. Either the prop or the puppet cameoed in the 1961 Toho comedy, Cheers Mr. Awamori. In All Monsters Attack Directive, an early script for Destroy All Monsters, Varen had a larger role, fighting alongside Rodan against King Ghidorah. Unfortunately, ten years of decay had left his suit unusable. The filmmakers were only able to salvage the gliding prop, relegating Varen to only a few brief shots. It was featured alongside the movie's other monster suits and props in many publicity stills, highlighting how small it was. To explain this size discrepancy, contemporary sources chose to scale Varen to only 10 meters in height and state that he was a juvenile. A select few later or recent sources still give that height in the 60 ton weight, but most simply give the monster the 1958 incarnation stats. Shinichi Sekizawa's initial script for the 12th Godzilla film, titled The Return of King Ghidorah, featured Varen teaming up with Godzilla and Rodan to battle against King Ghidorah, Gigan, and the alien dragon Mogu. The villains were pawns of the evil alien brain Miko, who operated from the Godzilla Tower. Unfortunately, the lack of a usable Varen suit likely spelled his doom. Amazingly, Varen was in contention to be Godzilla's final opponent of the Heisei series. Godzilla vs. Giant Monster Varen, the first of countless story proposals for what became Godzilla vs. Destroya, featured Varen as the harbinger of the apocalypse who would emerge to destroy the world in the year 1999. Godzilla and his adopted son were to team up and defeat him. Varen's last shot came in Shusuke Kaneko's proposal for Godzilla against Varen, Baragon, and Anguirus, giant monsters all out attack. Here, Varen was an ancient guardian monster known as Baradaki, the white wind monster, who joined forces with the golden freezing monster Angira and the red hot monster Baragora to defend Japan against Godzilla. The three guardian monsters, renamed Varen, Anguirus, and Baragon by the JSDF, would confront Godzilla in Yokohama. All three fell, but they wounded Godzilla enough for the Gotengo to finish him off. While Toho approved Kaneko's story, they requested that he add Mothra and King Ghidorah to increase the film's marketability. Kaneko obliged, giving Varen and Anguirus the axe and retaining Baragon in a reduced role for what became Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack. 
But Varen happened to be the all-time favorite of the film's monster designer, Fuyuki Shinada, who sculpted his facial fins onto the heads of the King Ghidorah suit. Varen is a trifibian monster. He crawls along solid land with ease and can move quickly underwater while remaining submerged for an extended period of time. Most unusually, he's capable of gliding flight through the use of winged membranes between his arms and legs, much like a flying squirrel. Varen glides at a speed of up to Mach 1.5, equivalent to the Showa Rodan's flight speed. The novel Godzilla 2000 by Mark Saracini explains that the monster floats by separating hydrogen from water and storing it in sacks along his torso. Varen's combat abilities go largely untested in the movies, and Godzilla Unleashed, his gliding abilities allow him to perform acrobatic martial arts style moves, and he bested Rodan in single combat in Godzilla Rulers of Earth. In Unleashed, Varen spits a pink sonic beam from his mouth, explained in the game's manual as an adaptation that allows him to communicate over vast distances. These waves can be weaponized to disrupt an opponent's sense of balance. He can also emit more concentrated blasts. Varen's hide is impervious to conventional weapons. Dr. Sugimoto and Majima propose that his durability comes not from the thickness of his skin, but its flexibility, which allows it to withstand impacts from projectiles and explosives. However, he was stunned when a truck full of Dr. Fujimura's explosives detonated beneath him, and was ultimately killed when they were set off inside him. Following the discovery of a rare species of butterfly native to Siberia in the Tohoku region of Japan, Professor Sugimoto sent two of his students to the remote village of Iwaya to search it. However, both men were killed in a landslide which locals attributed to the local mountain god, Baradagi. Yuriko Shinjo, a reporter and sister of one of the two deceased students, traveled to Iwaya with photographer Horiguchi and Kenji Uzaki, another of Sugimoto's pupils. When they arrived, they found many of the villagers and a local priest praying for Baradagi's mercy. The trio tried to explain that Baradagi was a mere superstition, but the villagers were too afraid to even follow after Gen, a young boy who wandered beyond the village's boundaries to chase after his dog. Once Yuriko found him, Ozaki convinced the villagers to meet them with another round of scientific guilt tripping. He was immediately proven wrong when a colossal reptile emerged from the nearby lake and rampaged through the village, killing the village elder as he attempted to placate him. Uzaki identified the creature as a Varanopode, a giant reptile that lived from the Triassic through Cretaceous periods. In the wake of the attack, the JSDF wasted no time forming a defense line around the lake and firing chemical shells into it with mortars. Varan rose from the lake once more, shrugging off their firepower. As they retreated, he chased Kenji and Yuriko into a cave, but Professor Sugimoto saved them by having nearby troops lure him away with flares. Rather than return to the lake, Varen unfurled large membranes between his limbs and glided into the distance. He splashed down in the sea and began approaching Tokyo. Aaron naval units intercepted the monster, but could do nothing to halt his advance. Varen soon came ashore at Haneda Airport. As his hide was too tough to be penetrated with any known weapons, the JSDF made plans to destroy him from within instead. They tied experimental excavating explosives to flares dropped from the sky. The plan was successful as he swallowed the bombs which subsequently exploded inside him. Mortally wounded, Varen crawled back into the ocean before the final bomb exploded. At the end of the 20th century, invading aliens known as the Keylock seized control of Monsterland and unleashed its inhabitants to level Earth's major cities. They seemed to neglect Varen, but once humanity severed the Keylock's mind control and established a control system of their own, he and the other monsters assembled at the foot of Mount Fuji to destroy the aliens' base of operations. Varen watched from a safe distance with Baragon and Manda as Godzilla and his allies fought and eventually killed the Keylock's trump card, King Ghidorah. After the Big G smashed the base, Varen returned to Monsterland to live out his days in peace. Varen's next two appearances in kaiju films were even shorter, a stock footage shot at the beginning of Godzilla Final Wars, and a skull on a monitor in Pacific Rim Uprising. He also appears for a split second in the Godzibon Season 1 finale. Dallas Productions and Cory Productions severely modified Varen for American consumption. Retitled Varen the Unbelievable for its 1962 release, nearly all of the Toho drama unit's footage was replaced with the misadventures of Commander James Bradley, who wakes up Varen while conducting chemical tests. Dallas and Cory spent what must have been half of their $5 budget on a prop claw for the scene where Varen corners the new characters in a cave. 
His name is strangely never spoken in the film, though the villagers call him Obake, a type of yokai. His Godzilla-like roar was replaced with some low hissing and growling as well. Before he worked on the Heisei Gamera trilogy, Kazunori Ito was fond of inserting kaiju references into his anime scripts. In the 1986 OVA, Prefectural Earth Defense Force, an undercover Colonel Baradagi explains that it's impossible for a teacher to meet her parents because they died eating a flare in Haneda. Cue a brief but lavish recreation of the ending of Varen. Varen's been featured in several video games, usually as part of a large cast. His most noteworthy roles are as a boss character in Godzilla Monster of Monsters, and as a playable fighter in Godzilla Unleashed for the Wii. He was snubbed by the recent Godzilla Defense Force mobile game, although his sprite exists in the game's files, unused. During the few glorious years when Random House had the Godzilla license, Varen was featured in three picture books, two children's novels, and the young adult novel Godzilla 2000. He also would have appeared in the aptly titled Godzilla and the Lost Continent, which Random House cancelled after the failure of the 1998 TriStar film. In Godzilla Monster Apocalypse, an individual designated Varen 2 appeared alongside Baragon 2 and Anguirus 4 in Los Angeles in 2030, after the three were attacked by Godzilla in the Pacific Ocean. Godzilla promptly destroyed all three monsters with a single blast of atomic breath. Author Renji Oki admitted that this scenario was inspired by Shusuke Kaneko's original concept for GMK. Baron's comic debut was in a manga adaptation of his movie. He had more luck in picture books than on the screen, popping up in several during the late 60s and early 70s, plus tie-in manga for Destroy All Monsters and All Monsters Attack. In 1990, the monster also appeared in the Godzilla comics Monster Warrior Godzilla Story. Two decades after that, Varen appeared in three comic series from IDW. In Godzilla Rulers of Earth, he burst out of a lake in China and proceeded to have quite the busy night, battling the military, Rodan, and Gyra. A later flashback showed that he appeared in ancient times. At some point, the Trilopods captured him and stored him in their hive, with one assuming his characteristics before facing Godzilla in LA. After King Caesar freed the monsters, Varen helped Zilla kill a trilopod with Titanosaurus's traits, and even stood up to the colossal Megiddo. In Godzilla in Hell, a demonic version of Varen confronted Godzilla in an eternal ocean. In the final Godzilla comic published by IDW, Rage Across Time No. 5, Varen brawled with Godzilla, Anguirus, and Baragon in prehistoric times. Anguirus and the ongoing meteor strikes drove him off. Though he may well return in Season 2 of Godzibon, that wraps up Varen for now.